Welcome back. Today's the day we're gonna start washing engine parts for the 48WL. I invested in a parts washer and filled it full of mineral spirits. And I've got my parts laid out on the table behind me. So I'm gonna go through and start getting these things cleaned up. Um, I was told that the best way to do it is wash them in mineral spirits and get these things medical grade cleaned. I do have the flywheels rebuilt, but the next step is fitting the flywheels to the cases. And the uh, friend of mine that did the flywheels suggested that I get these things cleaned up to where they're ready to go, bring them back, and we'll fit everything together and make sure everything plays nice. So I'm excited to get that done. Um, I have it until the end of the month to get this stuff kind of cleaned and ready to go. So today we're gonna focus on putting in some time to get these things washed. Probably be a good couple hours here washing parts and getting things to soak and getting things cleaned up. The cases are in pretty good shape, but I also have all of the cams, I've got the oil pumps, I've got all the parts. Some of those things honestly have been bagged for years, I would imagine, and they came out dirty and they were stored dirty. So I'm gonna to try to get these things as clean as possible today. So follow along, stay tuned, and we'll see what we can do to get these things looking good. I did buy a pair of gloves. My skin doesn't like a lot of chemicals, so I needed something to kind of protect myself. We'll start with this case half first, start running fluid over the top of it. I did buy a set of brushes. I've got a couple of brass brushes. I've got a steel brush, and then I do have a nylon brush, which I'm not sure how that's gonna hold up in this solution, but we'll give it a shot. We'll start the motor here and we'll start cleaning parts. Follow along. One of the things I wish is that the shelf was a little bit smaller. Um, I've never used a parts washer, so I'm not exactly sure what to expect. And I, I see that it does make a little bit of a mess and sprays everywhere. So I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put the cases directly in the mineral spirits and not run the pump and just scrub on these things a little bit just to try to get them clean. This is something I'm very new to. I have never actually cleaned a set of engine cases before, so I'm not exactly sure what to expect or exactly sure how to clean them all properly. The outside of the cases were fairly clean to begin with. There was just a lot of grime and a lot of old oil and sticky residue on the inside of the cases. I'm assuming it's old oil from sitting for you know, a long period of time. But these do seem to be cleaning up nicely. Thank you. 
let it sit in the solution for a couple minutes here. Trying to make sure all the oil journals and whatnot are cleaned out so there's no debris inside. So I'm running mineral spirits through each one of the holes. As you can see, that oil pump is pretty grimy. It's got a lot of old oil hanging out on it. It does spin freely. But I want to get it into the bath here and get it soaking for a little while. This one's a little cleaner. But again, same thing, lots packed full of packed full of grossness on the end there, so that would never even pump fluid. So I think what we'll do is we'll dunk this in the tank and we'll let it we'll let it just sit and soak. Keep that out of the way while I scrub on this for a little while. And I will not be sending this out for vapor hauling or anything like that. I've read online that a lot of guys do that, or they go and sandblast them, and I've read both good and bad things about both. And the recommendation to me was just to clean them real well. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna scrub all these things up as best as possible that I can, and hope that it's good. Just having them sit in the fluid here actually has taken off a lot of the grease that really has made a difference in the appearance of the inside of the cases and the outside. So I'm hoping that'll be good enough.
Not sure if you can see the difference. There's quite a bit of the grime is gone out of the cases. They do look a lot cleaner. There still is a little bit in this hole here. And I'm not sure if that's something I just let sit in the tank for a little while. I do worry about letting things sit. I don't want anything to get damaged in the process. But as you can see inside this case, there's a lot of grime in there. So we'll go ahead and we'll dunk this in the tank. We'll let her sit for a couple minutes. We'll move these oil pump parts around just to kind of take a look at them. It's nice to see the, the grime falling right off of it in the minnow spreads. bought the odorless stuff. That's pretty much what they have in the area and I bought everything everybody had. So I was only able to get nine gallons, unfortunately. But it still stinks. Uh, it seems to be doing a good job though. And I'm hoping that's the right stuff. did also buy a couple of these round brushes and I'm hoping that these are going to be right for what I'm doing. I think they will be. Working in these heavy duty gloves is difficult. Not something I'm used to. Now I've got quite a bit of work left to do on this bike, but man, am I excited to hear this thing run for the first time. I don't know how long it has sat in pieces. From the sounds of it from the previous owner, it had been a while. The bottom end was supposed to have been rebuilt, but unfortunately upon inspection and tearing apart the flywheels, I found that the bearing cages had detonated. They were completely in pieces. That's why there was so much side to side play on the flywheels. So I'm not sure when the, the rebuild supposedly happened. I mean, obviously a lot of guys will tell you that online. Well, fully rebuilt, fresh rebuilt, whatever. Um, unfortunately, I don't think that that was the case with this. Which I'm grateful that the 
connecting rods move so much side to side because if they didn't have any play in them and there were hairline cracks in those bearing cages, I never would have known. I would have assembled the motor and put it together and ran it just like it was and had a catastrophic failure. So I'm very grateful that that worked out the way that it did. And that could have been potentially bad for a lot of things. Never know what you're getting into with a 75 year old bike. Especially one without a big story. You know, this guy that I bought it from had bought a pair of them supposedly and they both were in pieces. And he had this thought of he was going to put them together and sat on them for a while. And I guess somebody approached him on one of the projects and bought that off of him. And then once that sold, he really thought to himself about not keeping the one that I have. So I was able to buy this one. I wish I would have had the chance to see both of them to kind of see what was there and what wasn't because there were parts that were missing from this and there were extra parts that came with it too. And I wonder how complete both of those bikes were. If there were truly extra parts for my bike or if the other bike got shorted on a, an extra transmission or whatnot. I do know that once I get these cases cleaned and all the parts cleaned and they're dry, that I will actually spray them off with brake cleaner. I'll get everything to flash and dry quickly and hopefully that will clean up any extra little bits and pieces and things that are kind of stuck residual. Clean out some of these oil holes again. Spray into a couple spots that I can't get into with the brushes.
oil passage in there is blocked. I don't have a brush small enough to get in there, so I'm working at it with a pick, hoping I can kind of get some of that debris to move. Super gummy stuff in there. Stuck pretty good. Maybe pick it out, hopefully. These were completely caked full of grime, just disgusting grime, even though these were cleaned at one point in time and again, totally rebuilt bottom end. They were full of just grossness. Now, they're looking a little bit better. I wasn't sure if I should take those out or not. I'm not sure if I have the proper tools to do it either. My thought was to a hammer and a screwdriver and hit it around in a circle and get it to unthread, but I don't know if that's the right idea or the wrong idea. I don't want to risk damaging the cases. I have to say though, these brass brushes or this brass brush is doing some work. Get a lot of that stuff worked out of there. It's a slow process, but it's getting done. sit for a little while longer and we'll start scrubbing on these oil pumps. Try to get some of this stuff to loosen up too.
plan for the oil pumps is to get these things cleaned up and then I do have a burnishing tool that I'll go through and I'll run up and down each one of the channels and try to get this thing all refreshed. filled. I'm not sure if that's oil or if that's dirt or what that is. I have no idea. That brush actually fits in there so I think we'll disconnect it from this ring here. I'll run this brush through that hole Try to get that cleaned up too. And hopefully I'm not packing this stuff into the cavities. Cause a problem later, and it might be. It's already starting to look quite a bit better. Just a little bit of scrubbing that I've been doing for a couple minutes is actually cleaning this thing up a lot. Pretty positive though, with all the grime that was on this, there's no way I'd get these caps off. I'd be able to burnish this or get this thing running properly. I wouldn't be surprised if this didn't work. You know, had, it wasn't working, I should say, when it was taken apart. I've loosened up some of it, so we'll put it back in and let it soak for a little while longer. Move on to the next one. Which is coming apart quite nicely now that it's not covered in grossness. It's amazing how that old oil turned into such sludge and really kept these parts from moving. Some of these parts might have been picked off. The, the sludge on it is so thick that it just refuses to move, which is amazing. But I guess if I'd been somewhere for 75 years or however long, I might not want to move to. Might be happy where I was.
I think we can all get that stuck feeling, can't we? That actually looks really nice. It's got a little bit of wear on it. Nothing I can feel with the glove on, obviously, but it actually looks really good. I'm not sure if that had a Woodruff key in it or not when I lifted it out. It may have, and I may have dropped it in this tank. Might be something I'll have to go searching for. gears on this actually look really good. They're not, they don't look like they're worn. So and I wonder you know, how much use they actually saw. I do wonder how many miles this bike actually has on it. Some of the parts make me feel like it doesn't have a lot. Some of these parts make me feel like it has a ton. Again, I don't know if all these parts went to this bike or if they went to the second bike. As far as I know, they were both the same year. They were both in 1948. But I didn't see the second one, so I don't know for sure. I'm just going based on what I was told. From what I understand, these bikes were both in Michigan their whole life. Couldn't tell you what dealership they were bought from or anything like that, but they both spent their life here.
one of the things I did before videoing was I pulled the idler gear, idler gear and the screen for the oil return. Clean quite a bit of that up. I think we'll run the sprayer across a little bit. sit and dry for a little while and then we'll attack it again in a little while. Put the cam cover in next and let that soak and probably put a few more parts in here just to get... You know your video is getting too long when the camera dies. Anyway, had a battery change. I have put in the cam cover, the cams, and the intake. I'm not sure if the intake is a good idea or a bad idea to put in here. It is disgusting. It's covered in, I don't even know what, honestly. A lot of road grime, a lot of rust, a lot of grossness. I'm hoping it cleans up pretty well. As for the cams, I don't feel like they need a lot of cleaning. I think that they're in pretty good shape. We're gonna give them a little, little bath and a little brush. Try to get off some of the residual oil that's on there. If any of it will come off. Most of it seems like it's just cam wear. Maybe baked down old oil, I'm not sure. The cams don't appear to be worn too bad, they're just a little dark in color. So maybe they ran too hot. Not 100% sure what a good and appropriate amount of time to soak things in mineral spirits is. I don't want to risk damaging anything. And maybe I'm going through this too fast.
these seem to be cleaning up really well, honestly. Like I said, they don't look like they're heavily worn or anything like that. I've seen later model cams out of shovel heads that are just worn out, like completely trashed. And these don't seem to have a lot of wear. I almost need a light in here to see what I'm doing. I can see pretty well, but a little extra light would be nice. I didn't buy the most expensive parts cleaner. Bought a very basic entry level one. I figure it's one of those things that I can use for a while and upgrade if I need to. I feel like it's getting a job done and doing what it needs to do. was a pain in the butt to assemble, that's for sure. I know it's not the most exciting video, that's for sure. You know, cleaning parts is never the best time. I can't say that I'm really enjoying it, but I know it's a necessary thing that I need to get done. My goal is to try to have this bike done by spring. That may be a lofty goal. It may be a stretch, but we're gonna try. Got some parts I need to buy yet, some things I need to source. Some of the big things are ticked off, like the transmission is done, the wheels are done, they're mounted, tires are on, you do have the front brake done. I know I need to address that front fender because it does have quite a twist in it, so it looks kind of kind of lame, unfortunately. So I'm hoping to clean that thing up and get that twisted back into shape so it looks good. engine is going to be the biggest hurdle for now, getting this thing done and getting it together and getting it ready to be able to run. I know it needs some love. The hope is I'll be able to give it all the love it needs to be able to have it run properly for a long time. I'd like to be able to enjoy this bike for many years.
But I also know too, if I don't give myself some sort of a deadline that I'll never meet it. I won't get it finished the way I need to because I'll focus on too many other things and I actually won't make this a priority. So I know I need to take the time to actually work on this thing when I have extra moments. You know, days get busy, you know, with having the shop and the build going on here, you know, there's a lot going on. I don't have all the time to, you know, put into this bike like I'd like to. But if I want the shop to run like I want it to, then I need to put time into that too. You know, also my eBay business is busy and, you know, shipping parts and posting parts takes a lot of my day. So I need to focus on those things too, because if I don't have money coming in, then I can't afford to do these projects either. You know, these things aren't free. You know, I don't have all the all the money in the world, so I need to make money to be able to afford the things that I'm doing. You know, I have to, you know, pay for you know my way of life and I have to pay for my projects and I pay for the shop and all those things. So I need to continue to make that eBay business work. And it is working. It's just, you know, I need to focus time at that and most of my time is consumed by it. But Again, like I said, I know I needed to set a date. You know, my, my date, I don't have a, a hard and fast date, but springtime is when I want to have this thing together. I'd like to have it fire over the winter closer to spring so I know it's running and then fine tune it from there. You know, I've got a few parts to order. I've got some things I need to find. Obviously, I need to clean some more things and get some things going, but I know I need to get this thing kind of buttoned up and I need to get on it. You know, because I have other projects that are waiting too, so I need to take time to actually work on all of these things. But I can't bounce back and forth between this project, that project, and the other too much because I will focus not enough time on one. You know, I do have that 79 FLH that's in, and I do want to get that thing kind of going over the winter too. It doesn't really need anything, it needs brakes addressed. Um, I want to change some things out just to make it, you know, my own and go from there. What the future is on that bike, I don't really know. Uh, I may keep it. I do like it a lot. I like that style of bike. I've always liked those, so I may hang on to that for a little bit. Uh, so we'll see. But I do have, you know, a myriad of other projects that are just sitting right now that I need to get to as well. I did miss one screw in this cam cover. I'm gonna see if I can get it out. I'm not sure if there's a spring or a ball bearing or anything that's gonna go flying out of there. I'm assuming this is some sort of a check ball or a oil pump, but I don't know. I don't have my parts manual right here. I didn't want to bring it over here and chance it getting wet and ruining it, because that would be my luck. So yeah, maybe some sort of portioning valve and maybe, maybe there's something in there. Let's see. That may have just had a needle point in it, I'm not sure. I feel like that directs oil flow, that helps that to either increase or decrease oil flow. So I'm going to take all these extra rings off. I'm going to wash that real quick because that is covered in grime and I want to get that cleaned up too so I can put that back into that cam cover. It's one of those parts that'd be easy if I could just grab it with my hands and wash it real quick, but this stuff doesn't like my skin. and It burns and then I, I, I'm feeling those effects and I'll have a little rash for a long time and I don't, I don't really want to do that if I don't have to. What I need is one of those jeweler's baskets. And I had one for my ultrasonic cleaner, but unfortunately it fell apart. So I don't have that anymore. So I'll need to get a new one of those. That way I can take these small parts like that and then hang them in here. And then that way I know that they'll be safe and they'll 
get cleaned like they should and I won't miss anything, I won't lose any of these small tiny pieces. You know, that's, the key is to keep all this up together as much as possible. Try to be very gentle at putting the pick in these holes. I don't want to cause any damage to any of the holes. I know that I need to make sure that the oil will flow through them. The bottle brush is small enough to actually be able to get into where I need to with them, unfortunately. pump on again and we'll let some fluid flow into this.
that cam cover looks quite a bit better, honestly. I know it's not perfect, but man, oh man, does that clean up pretty nice. Still some spots on the inside there that are concerning to me, so I think I'll scrub on those a little bit. Still some oil and grime in there. And hopefully the tip of this brush will get in there with, and I can get that out. What do you guys use for these little holes in cleaning a parts washer? Is there very small bottle brushes that go in here? Is there something that you recommend? Something that makes more sense? I think Brake Clean will probably clean up a lot of this stuff because I'll have a focused point with the nozzle, which will help out a lot in my opinion. But is there something you do before that that makes sense? I feel like it's good when you can see daylight through all the holes, right? <laughs> that means they're clear. All right, just because those have come out so well, I'm gonna move some of these parts out of the way. And I'll put this right case half back in soak for a while. Just let it sit in the bath. Because I feel like that can clean up quite a bit better than what it is. I'm gonna start working on this intake and see what we can get done on that. See if we can get to clean up at all. My concern is it will ruin the seals. I don't want to do that. I don't know if those can be replaced. I think they can. And if I wreck them, then I'll be replacing them, right? Throat's pretty clean, which is a positive sign. I'm glad about that. That way it'll flow as well as it's going to. And just like the oil pop, there's some heavy stuck parts on here, some heavy grime. The nice thing is after having this in here for a while, these actually move fairly well. When I first put this in here, these things were stuck. I mean, I, I could move them, but not, not like I can right now. So they are moving quite a bit better. We'll move back to this oil pump right now. Now that it's been soaking for a little while, it's starting to really look good. The 
tank here, on the other hand, is not looking so good. Those mineral spirits are getting pretty gross. And I don't know what the longevity is on that. I could say one of the things that I wish that I would have done is I wish I would have installed some sort of a drain system. I know it has a drain on the bottom that literally just threads into the bottom, but I wish I would have got some piping or something with a shutoff valve. That way I could control the flow of the mineral spirits coming out of the tank. That way I can put it into whatever I need to next. I also need to figure out how to dispose of this stuff. I'm not sure what to do with old and used mineral spirits. All new things for me. Some of that stuff, as you can see, is stuck right on there. I have to pry it off a little bit. Well, like any good day, there's only a limited amount of time to work on things, and I've reached that limit for today. I need to get lunch yet, and then I have an appointment this afternoon that I have to get to before I can get back and actually get ready to pull some more parts. So anyway, this is where I'm going to leave off for the day. Thanks for following along. Thanks for watching the, the, the progress here. You know, obviously if you guys have any suggestions on cleaning engine cases or some of the things that you know I may be doing wrong or whatnot, please let me know. Um, this is new to me. You know, these are all things that I'm figuring out as I go. You know, I read things online and you know there's there's good opinions and bad opinions and unfortunately you know sometimes you don't know until you try things. But anyway, if you guys have not subscribed to my channel yet and you like the content, please do. I'm noticing a lot of people are watching my videos but aren't actually subscribed. So if you like what I'm doing here, please subscribe. I'm trying to build the channel. Of course, I'm trying to you know make some money off YouTube, hopefully. And you know, with those subscriptions and whatnot, will generate some income for me to help me you know, offset the cost of some of the things that I'm doing. So if you like what I'm doing, please subscribe. Of course, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. You know, I appreciate that. Any feedback, any comments, all that good stuff, I really appreciate that. I try to answer them as quickly as possible. I'm very grateful for all of you guys' you know, input and suggestions and whatnot. It's been awesome. Um, as always, I appreciate you guys hanging around to the end of the video. If you like this one, another one will populate in a minute. As always, take care. We'll see you next time.